Hello everyone and welcome back to the workshop. I've talked in the past about the various ways you can hold parts in the lathe, each of them with their own pros and cons. As a quick recap, we have scroll chucks. They are the most common and practical chuck that I use. The big advantage to them is the jaws move in and out together, which means you can easily chuck in your part and start machining. The big downside though is the part will be machining with some runout or eccentricity, and with these chucks, there's no easy way to fix them. On this lathe, using this chuck, that's going to be about 40 or 50 microns of runout. If you need your part to be running true, then a 4 jaw independent chuck can solve this issue. You'll have to use a dial indicator to effectively dial out any run out or eccentricity. And if you do it right, the part will run absolutely on center, although this can take a little bit of time to properly set up. Another method is turning between centers with a lathe dog and a driving plate which can produce some really low run out parts but this method of turning is not optimal for most situations that I run into and that's where the collet chart comes in. If everything is set up correctly it should be a very low run out way of holding parts and it shouldn't take all that long to set up. In this project, I'll be making a collet chuck for the Sherline lathe, since it is a much more precise machine than the big lathe, and the parts that I want to machine using the collet chuck need to be pretty precise. If you've used collets before, you will know that they don't have a huge span of range, in terms of the size of parts they can hold. For instance, this 6mm collet can hold parts 5 to 6mm in diameter, Anything more or less will require the purchase of a new collet. Thankfully for me, I'll be making use of the collets that I already own, so I won't have to buy any more. These ER11 collets, which are on the smaller side of collet sizes, are the same collets that I use in my mill spindle. And since I own quite a few to be able to use different end mills, I thought I might as well reuse them in the collet chuck. Although if I wanted to hold parts larger than 7mm in diameter, I could simply make a chuck for the bigger collet size. So at the end of the day, this is just a piece of mild steel with a Morse taper shank that will fit into the Sherline lathe. The taper will be threaded to accept a drawbar and the chuck will have an internal taper, about 8 degrees for the ER11 collet and on the outside will be an M16 by 0.75mm pitch thread for the nut. So let's get started. We need this part to be as precise as we can get it, so I'll dial it in using the four jaw chuck. I need to use the top slide to cut an 8 degree internal taper, so I need it to be as precise as I can, so I'm going to make use of a protractor rather than use the guide on the compound. I'm still not a huge fan of the gibs on the top slide. If they're too loose, there's going to be a lot of slop and the resulting taper will be very messy. To get rid of any of this slop, I have to over tighten the gib screws, which makes it very difficult to advance, although you do get a much better cut.
Next, I need to cut the threads for the nut. Since I can't set the lathe to run below 500 RPM when I would optimally be cutting the threads at below 100, I'm going to need to cut them manually. It works really well, although it does take a lot longer. Next I'll be drilling a hole for a piece of steel to be inserted so I can hold the collar in place while I tighten it. Next we can use a hacksaw to cut the part to its final length. We can then rechuck it and then face it. Next we need to drill and tap a quarter inch thread for the drawbar. Because I'm making the collet chuck for the sherline, I need to cut a Morse 1 taper on the back of the collet chuck. Well, and there we have it. Testing the outside of the chuck, it looks like we're getting below 10 microns of run out. I didn't have any drill rod on me during filming, but later testing showed that the run out had jumped to about 25 microns, which is really good. I think I could improve it with a better quality collet, but 25 microns is pretty good for what I need. Either way, I think I'm pretty happy with this build. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something new. And with that, thank you very much for watching.